Evidence number one, mitochondrial Eve. Google mitochondrial Eve, you'll find out that the whole world, including the scientific world, thinks that all of the human beings on this planet come from one woman. But they say, but it's not Eve. Yes, yes, <laughs> we do have evidence that there's a single woman who gave rise to all the mitochondria on the planet, but don't think it's Eve. So they originally started calling her mitochondrial Eve. And later they decided to just call her the, yeah, the, the first or the, 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 they used a term for it, I can't think of it, but they, they, uh, they tried to get rid of Eve. Now they don't use that term anymore because it's so clear that there's only one way, only one woman could give rise to all of humanity, and that would be by literal Eve. She is called by everybody the mother of us all, and all our mitochondrial chromosomes come from one woman. Is that like sort of interesting? Maybe. I think so. I mean, like, especially in light when we contrast it with evolution, which says no, it's populations that evolved over time. And so we wouldn't have come from one, you know, ape ancestor that ended up evolving, which is what William Lane Craig is buying into now. It, it seems like the evidence, you're right, goes right to one woman versus a population of women. Right. So basically, the people who reject this data are basically have just, you know, st stuck their head in the ground and, and they just don't want to hear it. It, it has to do with um, deliberately trying to undermine God and God's people. And so this is very serious business. But what's interesting is God got it to us in spite of everybody, the evolutionists desire to suppress this. Okay, evidence, uh, this is, we're gonna talk a little bit about Eve's mitochondrial DNA consensus sequence. That's a mouthful. A consensus sequence means that, um, let's suppose you have a thousand people Let's suppose then you've given them all the same book and then you you come in and you change letters here and there and everywhere. Because everybody has their own specific changes, you can just go through and see that for that given first letter, first alphabet letter of the chromosome, um, that is only one person in the whole group is going to have that misspelling or that mutation. And then and then you can go with the, look at the next letter and you'll see again that only one or two people have that. And so you can basically recognize the mutations in that way. And so then you just can erase those few letters and you have the original consensus sequence. That's what they call it. And so um, this is a paper by Rob Carter and uh, we, he did most of the work, frankly, but we were co-authors, but then we decided it would never get published with both of us. So we just have Rob Carter here, and um, we just call it mitochondrial diversity within modern human populations. So we didn't want to say Eve because we would knew that in the mainstream journals, they would not tolerate a paper like that. But it's just, it's just stunning. And um, this is one way of, so, so Rob looked at all, like a, I think 800 women from all over the world to kind of find out uh, what where the consensus would be, and then we um, we were able to find what the red dot there is the mitochondrial consensus sequence. Wow! Now because there have been thousands of years between now and Eve, you'll see that all of the blue dots are the different women who are. And some of them have spread further, but they're all diverging away from the original. So red is the past of Eve, the ancient sequence, and the blue is the modern day people coming from her. And um, what we see is it's very clear that we are seeing, we, we can go in and we know the sequence. We know her sequence for her mitochondria. We know her genetic DNA. That's the amazing. That most people say never existed, but who clearly is the first woman to give rise to humanity. So amazing. Here we have the rings. The rings mean 
uh, 50 mutations. So you see within that ring, most of these um, less than 50 mutations have accumulated within the first ring. And then there are people further out who have more mutations. We're all, we're all mutating and we all, different parts of our chromosomes are mutating. But uh, what we see is this dispersion coming out of the original Eve. I'm, okay. uh, I'm in Florida, which is uh, just south of Alabama, and I see some of those dots way out there with a whole lot of mutations, Dr. Sanford. I think, I think I've met some of them up in Alabama. <laughs> How long ago did Eve live? Well, we found that on average, uh, the typical uh, person who's come from Eve has 21 mutations different from Eve. Pretty small number, really, although that chromosome is quite small. So basically, we, we approximately the mutation rate uh, for the, that chromosome, the mitochondrial chromosome, 0.1 per generation. So that's rough, roughly how many mutations per generation. So we're getting new mutations every generation. So we just include, we just combine 21 accumulated mutations with the rate of 0.1. And we get 210 generations since Eve. And since a generation is about 25 years long, we get a, um, a time frame for Eve. The time frame is 5,250 years ago. Very close to 6,000 years is the time since Eve and how many mutations have accumulated within people since Eve. Is that stunning? It is because genetically, mitochondrial DNA that is is saying there seems to be a recent ancestor in our genetics, and it's fitting more the biblical timeline than anything even close to an evolutionary or old Earth creation timeline. Right, and so and so basically, um, this means that um, systems are coming are break, breaking down. So this. The consensus sequence would be the perfect sequence, the uh, first sequence. All the rest, we just keep getting more and more mutations. 